here at our ranch up uh, by the Red Kagan Lodge. Dad always wanted to, to go back to river running, never did. I decided not to restore these, but to preserve them. It'd be great to see one in a museum, or any, the both of them in the museum. <laughs> well, it's gonna happen, gals. Yeah, it's, it's, it's long finally time gonna coming. happen. This yeah. is an exciting day, for sure. To have mom and dad remembered this way is gonna be really, really cool. Yeah. Okay, step one. Here we go, everybody. Today, we are actually going to remove these boats from this shed. They've been stored here for just too long. We want the world to actually see them. So we're gonna very carefully, with the help of uh, everybody, pull these out of here. Hey, on behalf of the family, we're extremely excited about this. As I was telling them earlier, it's gonna be sad though to watch them drive down the road. <laughs> Intense. Yeah, this is this is totally amazing to see them out here now. To see them this intact, and actually they're in better shape than I thought. It was just so exciting. One of two scary things has been accomplished. Now if we can get them unloaded, that's that's the next scariest thing. So. <laughs> It's in really good condition for having been stored for 50 years. You guys ready to lift? How's it looking? Are we cracking? Okay. Way better shape than expected. Generally how good the paint, varnish, fiberglass, wood is, the screws, I mean everything's fairly intact. Oosh. This is dad. And he always went in but first i always thought but that's where they had control <laughs> you know where they went in this way this gives you the feel you know the feel that the feel of my dad's back to have these sitting in a, a shed all these years is kind of sad I mean, these are active boats. They've got a life to them, and that's what we're bringing back, is the life to these boats, and that's how I feel that it's really important. This, honest to goodness, is probably my first time ever in this boat. What are you thinking about? <laughs> Just miss them? Yeah. I wish we were all could turn back time to ask them the questions we never did be one of the very first few people to start a business of running the river that nobody did for fun. It was all exploration, but to actually just do it for fun. Very first time sitting in either of these boats. I can almost feel the rush of the water and the thrill of going down a rapid. It's just, this is unbelievable. It takes me back to when dad started doing this. Just get to know him in a different way. Think about what it was like for him back then versus what I got to know him when he was older. This was a different part of his life that I never really got to know. Really looking forward to seeing one of these in the museum. So we just got the boats out, then we swept and vacuumed the boats. The whole goal is then to figure out what a finished boat looks like. 
it going to be a boat that we can take downstream or is it a boat that we just put in a museum that looks kind of like these ones right now? Uh, we've been working at the museum now for a year and a half to try and come up with an agreement uh, where we wanted to donate the boats really bad. We wanted to see that legacy preserved. Um, the last thing that had to happen was for the museum to come up here today and actually take a look at the boat, get them out, see if they want to accept them. And at this point, I'm taking it that they want to accept them. So now we're here just to sign the uh, agreement, uh, basically the the donation agreement that we are officially now donating the boats and the oars and the motor yes. to the museum. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the cataract boat is unique. The cataract boat was designed by Norm Nevels and the shape of it was punt-like. Norm had run a couple of trips on the San Juan and decided to build the cataract boat. This is a really an original design from Nevels. It had the rake to make it more maneuverable so it could turn in rapids and you ran it the same way. You sat in the boat, face down river, used the oars to position yourself. They respond well to oars because of the rake. Both ends tend to be almost free of the water. They feel a little heavy, but that's always been an attribute. Fairly hard to tip them if you're being careful. So there's kind of a growing fleet of cataract boats around the west, around the Colorado, Green Colorado rivers. One of those outcomes was, was the Reynolds cataract boat. The Nevels-Reynolds connection uh, began when Norm Nevels went up to Green River, Wyoming, to run the whole stem of the river. And as part of the advertising, there was a newspaper editor there, a guy named Adrian Reynolds in Green River, Wyoming. Adrian Reynolds' son, who was also named Adrian, but they always called him AK, was so fascinated by it that he, he writes to Nevels and says, I'd like to build some of these boats. Can you send me the plans? Norm said, sure. AK used those specifications to build a, a cataract boat. AK Reynolds built two, and they were copies of each other. They were pretty much exact. But he kind of started up with his brother-in-law. He started up a little company he called Reynolds Halsey River Expeditions. And they ran almost exclusively on the Upper Green. In 1950, they did a, a kind of a promo film trip for the Union Pacific Railroad, where the, the railroad wanted to advertise things you could do if you rode the railroad. You know, you could go visit Yellowstone, or you could do this, or you could go to Green River and take a river trip. The Green, too, at that time was undamped. So there were no dams to control it. So in the winter, it was real low and cold and froze over. And in the spring, when the, the sources and the, the snow in the Winter River Mountains melted, the green could run really big, 20, 25,000. And once you got to Ashley Falls, all that water made it just a gigantic rapid. I mean, the big rock is still sticking up out of it. It's kind of a big triangular shaped rock. It was so well known that it became the thing everybody worried about. It was almost like a rite of passage.
What's cool about it is that you can't see it anymore. It's under 500 feet of water now because the Flaming Gorge Dam is just down river. Had it not been flooded, it would have become one of those names that all modern river runners are familiar with, like the Big Drops or Hell's Half Mile, Warm Springs, things like that. But the, those particular ones, it's really poignant to see because you know that that's gone. Uniquely enough, these were the first plywood boats to really be run down on the Colorado River Basin in large quantities. The starting boats for an evolution of design that at this point is considered somewhat the gold standard. If you can get real close up over here, it's really faint and in red, but you might make out the G and the A, and down here the Y of Galloway. So it's looking at things like the joinery here, the thickness and width of the outer gunnel here, looking at the different frame members and how they were designed and built, and also looking for unique things like maybe where their things were repaired after a big hit. Yep, you just kind of have to dab, dab, dab instead of rub, so. I love it because it's a part of my community's history but it's part of my history. I grew up here. I never knew about the Reynolds boats. I'm excited about these boats in order to tell more about the river history of the area and the importance of the river, not just for agriculture, but for um, recreation purposes and how important that is. River recreation here is awesome because it is a part of history. This is um, part of the river history, part of Flaming Gorge history, part of Daggett County's history, part of Uinta County's history. Like most of us, you know, you, you go on your first river trip and you're like, oh my God, I, I want to do more of this. that's going to go bang off rocks on these whitewater rivers and you want a good strong wood. When they approached rapids, they turned and faced the stern downstream, facing your danger. If you have rocks coming up with, with a flat bottom boat, you have stability and you have the, with, and with the added rocker, you have the ability to turn the boat quickly, face your danger and row away from it. Reynolds boats were, were great whitewater boats for their era. What's magical about boats and rivers to me is the movement and the questions it evokes. Where did it come from? Where does it go? What does it see? Just that feeling of being on the water and having a constantly moving landscape. That's what's so magical to me about river running is that you're on your own. This is the end of a long journey and a start of a new journey. We uh, started a couple years ago to donate uh, my dad's and mom's boats. Uh, they were river runners and today they're actually unveiling one of them at the museum. So it's a pretty exciting time. 
you know, the family history that you take for granted and then look back and see what we've learned. And it's very exciting, very exciting to be able to share it with others. Today, we are actually gonna unveil one of the boats that we donated to the museum. I was the only one that got to ride in the boat. You know, I think I was four years old, you know, when that happened, but I feel their presence here. We ready? Come on, Come on. Oh. <laughs> the curves and the shapes and the, the fared lines of a, of a wooden boat are just really pleasing to the eye. It's just a throwback to simpler times in some ways. It's great to see it all preserved and, and now on display for river runners to be able to, to see from this point on. It's so, so satisfying to me, so fulfilling to see them come here and where now they can be seen. They're going to be on display, they're going to be interpreted, people are going to know that part of, uh, of this area's river recreation history.